All right, I want to talk about event bubbling, which is another important component of event listening in JavaScript. I have a web page I've built here with a series of nested elements. We have a main, div, paragraph, and span, all nested inside of one, each, one of each other. We have the IDs, MDS, MDPS, for main, div, paragraph, span, just to make it easy in my code. Um, what happens in JavaScript when you click on a nested element here? The click doesn't just stop at this span. It actually bubbles up. So it moves up in the HTML from the span to the paragraph, to the div, to the main, to the body. So if I had a click listener on each one of these elements and the user clicked on the span, so right here, if I clicked there, what would happen is the event listener would fire for this and then the paragraph, and then the div, and then the main, and then the body. So by default, events bubble. They bubble up through this. When you are creating an event listener, so if I move over to the JavaScript side of things here, when you're creating an event listener, add event listener, we've got the name of the event, you have the function that you want to run when the event is triggered and then there's an optional parameter here where you can put true or false. This has to do with whether or not you want to use the bubbling phase or the capture phase. By default this thing is false because that final parameter if I do element add event listener so we have the type and then the function, and then this last one, the name of this property is, is use capture, and this is a Boolean. Do you want to use the capturing phase, so have events go in this direction, or do you want to use bubbling? So if we set this to false, capture to false, it means the bubbling is what happens. So by default, events bubble up in this direction from the most nested to the top of the page. All right, now that's why most of the time when you see event listeners, they don't have that final parameters because the default is false. It's going to bubble by default. All right, so I've created variables in DPS pointing to the various elements. I've set up my console.log shortcut as log, and I've got the click listener. Just going to write out, hi, I'm a div inside of here. Okay, I refresh the page, and if I click on the div, sure enough, there it is. Hi, I'm a div. Now, if I click on the body, nothing happens. If I click on the paragraph, hi, I'm a div fired again. And that's because the click went from here through the div, and that's what triggered this function to run. If I click on the span, once again, hi, I'm a div, got called. Refresh, click on the span, there it is. Hi, I'm a div, got called. Because the click event bubbled from here to here to the div, and the div had the listener, and that's why it fired it. All right, so to experiment with this and how to control propagation, the propagation is the bubbling or capturing the event moving from one element to the next through the nesting. So I want to be able to control that and decide whether or not I want it to actually move to the next element. We're going to create a couple of functions here. We'll create one called highlight, and that's going to take an event. This is what I'm going to attach to all four of these elements. I'm going to give them a highlight function. So when you click on any one of those, it's going to call this highlight function. And we're using the arrow syntax from ECMAScript 6. Inside of here, we want to add CSS class gold to the clicked element, or the element that triggered the click event, uh, triggered the click event listener. That's what I want to say.
<laughs> All right. So here's the class name, gold, and it's just going to change the background color. So inside of here, I'm going to create a variable called uh, target, and that will be ev.current target. There we go. And target dot last name equals gold. There we go. So we're adding the CSS class name to here. I'm just going to try and do this all together at one time. M D P S my elements. I'm going to do a for each loop through the array and for each one of those elements I'm going to run this function which will attach the listener. So element add event listener click. We're going to be calling the function highlight. All right, now clicking any one of those should call this function and it'll get the current target. That's the thing that currently has the event firing this. And then we're going to set it to gold. All right, refresh this. So the body, or the main rather. So the main, it worked, set it to gold. And if I click on this one, it should set the span, but the click event is also going to travel from here to here to here to here, highlighting everything. And you'll notice I also got the high on a div, so that click event called two functions. This click listener called this function, and this click listener for the div called the highlight function. So both functions were being called. Okay, we have the gold happening now. To be able to test this multiple times, what I want to do is I'm going to create another function called reset to get rid of that gold highlighting. And we're going to pass in element and inside of here we're going to say element last name equals nothing. There we go. So inside of here we can call reset and we're passing in the target. There we go. Now, one limitation that I have on this right now is as soon as I call this, it's going to highlight it and then it's going to reset it. So I'm not really seeing the gold being added, removed. I need to put a bit of a delay in here. So inside of here, I'm going to wrap the reset into a set timeout. And a set timeout function, which will use this element and reset it. There we go. After, let's say, two seconds. Okay. So element class name set back to nothing after two seconds. So reset is going to pass the target down here. This is target. Target's going to be used inside of here. After two seconds, this function is going to run to clear it out. Save it, refresh, click on this man. They're all highlighted. After two seconds, boom. We'll click on that one, then this one. There we go. You can see after two seconds, it is clearing the highlighting out. Okay, useful little tool to have. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, the other part of this, is the propagation control. So, Let's say whenever this click listener, the high I'm a div one, whenever that fires, I want to stop the other click listener on this div from working. So I'm going to come inside, oops, I'm going to come inside of here and call a built-in method called stop immediate propagation. What this will do is it will stop the click event from being passed from beyond this. So the div has the click. It's going to stop the click from going to the main, but it's also going to stop this D click highlight function from running. So it's going to stop it from traveling up the chain of elements. It's also going to stop it 
from being used by any other click listeners. So stop immediate propagation means get rid of the other click listeners that are on the same object. Because this one was added after this one in my code, it means that this next one will not be called. So let's take a look at that. Refresh. And here we go. Hi, I'm a div, but the highlighting never took place. I can click again and again and again. The hi, I'm a div is happening every time I click, but it's never doing the highlight. So that's what stop immediate propagation did. The other event that we have here, I'm sorry, not inside of here, but up inside of this function right here, what I want to do is I want to use this event and say stop propagation. Similar to stop immediate propagation, stop propagation just stops the event from bubbling up through the chain. And because we've put it inside of highlight, it means all four of these have that. We have now effectively stopped the highlight from moving up the chain. Only the span got highlighted. Only the paragraph. Only the first click on the div. Only the main. So things are being stopped at that element because every time this function gets called, we're saying, right, forget about the bubbling. Don't let this click event bubble any further up the chain. Stop it right now. And then set it to gold, call the reset. So after two seconds, the highlighting gets removed. And on the div, because we've got the stop immediate propagation, it means only this log message, the console log message happens. The highlighting never happens because stop immediate propagation does not let both click listeners fire. And that's event bubbling and propagation and how you can control it. Any questions? Please leave them in the comments and I will put links to a few things here. The, uh, I have a video on the arrow syntax for functions which may help you if you're not understanding how I'm writing these a link to the event listener video and one for um, escape sequences. So if you're wondering why I put this slash in front of the single quotation mark here, the apostrophe, if you're wondering about that, I'll have a link down below to the escape sequences video. Thanks.